Hello everyone. My name is Daichi, and I will give you the lecture, regarding the radiation or remediation activities. So, let's start today's lecture. Today's theme is, Committed Effective Dose. Are you ready? So, the other day I talked about the unit of sievert, such as the effective dose, equivalent dose, and so on. Today I would like to elaborate the committed effective dose, which I haven't explained yet. Thank you, Mr. Daichi. But, first of all, what is committed, supposed to mean? Good question. The word commit, has a different kinds of meanings, but here it basically means, to entrust, or to delegate, leaving something important to the others. Later I will explain, why this word is used in the context of exposed dose. First of all, I would like you to understand, that the committed effective dose is the effective dose, caused by internal exposure. By the way, you have already understood the difference between the internal exposure and the external exposure, right? Yes, of course I have. The exposure caused by the radiation emitted from radioactive material outside the human body, is called external exposure. On the other hand, the exposure caused by the radiation emitted from the radioactive material inside the human body, taken through aspiration, for example, is called internal exposure, right? Correct. And one of the characteristics of internal exposure is that, after the radioactive materials are taken into the body, the radioactivity decreases, according to the decay of the atom core. And also, according to the metabolism inside the human body, the radioactive materials are eliminated, through urine, or stool. By the way, as explained in another lecture, the time for the number of the radioactive materials to be half, due to the disintegration of atom core, is called physical half-life. On the other hand, the time for the number of radioactive materials in the body, to be half due to the metabolism, which I explained earlier, is called biological half-life. And lastly, the time for the number of radioactive materials in the body, to be half due to the both effects above, is called effective half-life. It is better for you to remember these concepts, taking this opportunity. And some of the radioactive materials are accumulated in particular parts of the body, and they don't decrease simply as I explained. It depends on the kinds of radioactive material. So please keep these phenomena in your mind, as basic concepts for the decrease of radioactive materials. If the explanation for the committed effective dose is depicted in a figure, it's going to be like this. The effective dose to a certain point of time, T, will gradually decrease and the committed effective dose, is calculated from the conservative point of view. Specifically, the committed effective dose is calculated by integrating the exposure dose of entire life into a point of year, when the radioactive material is internally taken, based on the assumption, that whole exposure happens in one year. By the way, this time, T, is determined as 50 years for adults, and until becoming 70 years old for children. Okay, I see. It is called, committed, because the exposure dose for entire life, is committed, to a year of the exposure. Yes, that's right. Well done, Hickory. By the way, how is the committed effective dose calculated? Basically, the same approach is applied, as the one when the effective dose derived from the external exposure is calculated. In other words, with regards to the whole impact of the radioactive materials, until they are eliminated out of the body, the equivalent dose for each organ is calculated. After that, the tissue weighting factor, which represents the sensitivity to radiation of each organ, is multiplied, followed by summing up for every organ. It seems to be very complicated to calculate the dose, or whole process, from the intake to its elimination. Do we need to make very complex calculation? No worries. The committed effective dose can be calculated, in a very easy manner. Specifically, 
the committed effective dose can be calculated by multiplying the radioactivity of the radioactive material taken by the committed effective dose coefficient. And the examples of the committed effective dose coefficients are shown in this table. These coefficients are set in detail according to the types of radioactive materials, ages and the pathway for ingestion that includes oral intake or inhalation intake and so on. The committed effective dose coefficients are defined in detail so differently, but the dose can be very easily calculated. But, how can we calculate the internal exposure dose, for example, derived from the diet, which we had in the past? We can't measure the radioactivity of the foods, which we ate in the past, right? That's a very good point. But we can, and there are roughly two methods to measure the radioactivity of something we took in the past. First one is to measure, from outside of the body, the radiation emitted from inside the body, in order to estimate its radioactivity. The other one is to estimate the radioactivity, by analyzing the biological sample, like urine. This method is called bioassay. The machine in this picture is called, whole body counter, which monitors the amount of internal exposure dose, from outside the body. Other than that, there are machines to monitor the exposure dose to particular organ, like thyroid. The whole body counter can't measure too low radioactivity, as other measure equipments can't, either. As I explained earlier, the concentration of radioactive material, within the body, decreases with time. For example, the biological half-life of radioactive cesium is around from 70 to 100 days for adults. In order to estimate the exposure dose of early stage after the accident of nuclear power plants, it is necessary to be measured, approximately within one year after the accident happened. In addition, the metabolism of children is faster than that of adults. Therefore, the radioactivity for children should be monitored earlier than adults. We can't see, however, so much big difference with regards to the committed effective dose coefficients, between children and adults. So, in case the situation or condition for the exposure would be not so different, the exposure dose would be estimated, by examining the dose of adult. The concept, the methods for calculation of the committed effective dose, and the approach for the measurement of the actual internal dose become clear. Thank you very much. So, let me wrap up my lecture by providing you the key points. The committed effective dose, is the effective dose by integrating the exposure dose of entire life, into a point of year, when radioactive material is internally taken. The committed effective dose is calculated, by multiplying the radioactivity of radioactive material internally taken, by the committed effective dose coefficient. In addition, the committed effective dose deriving from the radioactive material taken in the past, can be estimated by measuring from outside of the body, like whole body counter, or by the bioassay including analyzing urine. Okay, today's lecture is now dismissed. See you next time. In this channel, the useful information, regarding the radiation and remediation, will be provided to you. If you like it, please subscribe to this channel, and do not forget to click the like button.